Good afternoon. Um, it's in season and I've had about four people email me that they have issues with the two panel saddle which in my opinion is hands down the most comfortable versatile saddle out there. Any two panel saddle for that matter. Doesn't have to be my signature saddle. They're just more comfortable. Um, but anyway, I've had some people email me that they're having issues with the panels coming apart while they're either walking in or climbing up the tree. And in the first video I did, I thought I had explained that, but evidently I didn't. So I'm going to go through that one more time. I actually did, but I don't think a lot of people pay a lot of attention to videos. They look at them and then they just go out and assume they're going to do it all correctly. So this is obviously not my hunting backpack. But it's a backpack I'm going to use just for this. It's my camera backpack, actually. Okay, this is an ESS. Hunted out of single panel saddles. Don't like them. Not very comfortable. Climb all the time. Okay, so the first thing I do, typically when you take a two panel saddle out, it's going to be all kind of kitty womped. Um, so first thing I always do is I take my leg straps. When you take it out of the box, it's going to be all kitty womped. I take the leg straps and put the leg straps all the way to the end. Put the buckles all the way at the bottom. I also adjust my waist belt. You know, I just slap it on, slide into it, and adjust the waist belt with these adjustment buckles here so that the female end of the waist buckle is going to be half, about at my navel when I actually put this on. And then I take all of the stuff off the male end and then I pull the male buckle all the way out close to the end. And I also adjust my bridge. This has an adjustable bridge strap. And I like mine about 13 to 16 inches on this particular saddle because these D-rings are about two and a half inches tall each. So I like it about 13 to 16 inches. Um, and once you adjust it and you find your sweet spot, you leave it there. But the first thing I do, I lift, I grab the... I grab the bridge in the center once I've got everything adjusted the way I want it and I take this inner panel is the one with the leg straps on it. The outer panel has the bridge loops and it also has the waist buckle on it, the waist belt. So I grab this in the center, stick my hand in here, this is the inner panel again and I just slide it down until it overlaps evenly, somewhat evenly overlaps the outer panel. So both of these braces are somewhat, you know, next to each other. And then what I do is I grab it, kind of pull it apart, step into it. And what you want to do once you step into it is you want to pull it above your waist. A lot of guys, I think, are putting it down here over their butt, and then they're hooking up the belt. Well, your butt cheeks move when you walk or when you climb. So when you're, anytime you're moving your butt cheeks and you got those panels overlapped, and you know, you're not physically hunting, they're gonna come apart. That's just the way a two panel is, they're gonna come apart. So when you're walking, you're putting on your saddle for walking in or for ascending or descending the tree, you pull those panels while they're evenly overlapped the best you can. You pull them up above your waist, just like you'd, a weightlifter belt would be. So you lift those up above your waist, and then you reach around here and you grab your female buckle. Reach around the other side. Grab the male end of the buckle. Buckle those together and then pull that tight. Once you pull that tight, this isn't going anywhere for climbing or walking because it locks the inner panel in and it's up above your waist so nothing's moving on it. Again, if you put it down below where a belt would be, your butt cheeks are moving and they're going to separate those two panels. Or if you use a pouch. I definitely do not recommend using pouches with a two panel saddle because the pouch is on the outer panel. And it will, over time, walking or whatever, even when you're hunting, as soon as you slide your weight forward, 
it's going to pull your outer panel down. There's no reason to ever have a pouch anyway. Uh, I've never had a pouch. Everybody I've ever gotten into saddle hunting over the last 40 years has never used a pouch. Pouches are something they want to sell you because it's another product, but uh, there's no reason for a pouch. That's what backpacks are for. So, you know, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach in my backpack at the base of the tree because I put my saddle on at the base of the tree. I do not wear it in. I take my, this is my lineman rope. Now this is actually a tree tether rope, but I use two tree tethers instead of a lineman and a tree tether. Reason being is when you use a tree tether as your lineman rope, it's got this big loop. So if you have to bypass a branch, then you can use your regular tree tether by going over the branch and hooking it to your lineman loops. And then you can disattach your original lineman loop or lineman rope and continue climbing and now when you get up to the top if you only have to bypass one branch when you get to the top the lineman rope you took off is actually a tree tether so it's going to have this big loop that you can wrap around the tree you know and pull all your stuff through uh, if you if you do it the regular way where you use a lineman rope to go up the tree and then you have to switch to your tree tether when you go bypass a branch because you have to go over the branch and continue up using that as your safety belt then you've disattached your lineman rope once you get to the top you can't use your lineman rope as your tree tether because it's got a really small loop in it and you can't pull all your gear through it you can't pull the carabiner and prusik knot or rope man back through that hole it's too small so by using two tree tethers one for a lineman rope and one for your tree tether. Either way, if you have to bypass a branch, you're always going to have a, the, the one you have left over is something you can move, wrap around the tree and use as a tree tether because it is a tree tether basically. So if you have any issues with this stuff, because some people don't like this stuff hanging here, uh, that's a pretty simple fix as well. Take your lineman rope out. This is when you're walking in, okay? Not at the base of the tree. I mean, you're going to have it on it. You're going to put it on the base of the tree no matter what. But if you put it on at the vehicle and you don't like walking with this dangling, just take your lineman rope out, wrap it around your body, slide your carabiner close to the end, and then when you come back around here, you're going to have your carabiner. You've wrapped it around your body. Hook your carabiner to your bridge strap and then slide, reach around behind you and basically slide, slide your Prusik knot and now you got your lineman rope on and none of this stuff is dangling. It's really simple. People make this out to be way more difficult than it is. And I think it's just because a lot of hunters want something that's super simple. They don't want to take the time to learn something that takes an extra 10 minutes. But they're going to have a lot more advantages of using that type of saddle when they're hunting. So anyway, once you get to the base of the tree, and I put this stuff on at the base of the tree. What I just showed you is for people that are physically walking in through the woods with their saddles on. Once you get to the base of the tree, what you do is you... Slide your Prusik knot back around. Disattach it from your bridge strap. Unravel it around your body. Go around the tree. Now I've already got steps in this tree. Kind of low, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Uh, Hook your carabiner to your other bridge loop. Adjust this as needed. For climbing, you know, per the diameter of the tree. And then what I would do, this is a very cheap backpack. <laughs> I will take my backpack and just fling it over my right shoulder. I would have my bow on the ground tied to a rope and I'm either holding onto the rope or the rope's already up in the tree and then I'm gonna climb the tree. That wasn't a very far climb, obviously. 
once you get up the tree I'm pulling this a little tighter once you get up the tree and you're comfortable what I typically do is if I haven't done it already I'll take a bow holder and I'll put it over here on the back side of the tree about 120 degrees to my right from where I'm actually going to physically be hunting and that's where I'm going to hang my backpack just about like that okay then what I'm going to do I'm going to reach in my backpack which is just as easy as reaching in a pouch which when you use pouches and you're physically hunting and you're sitting like this that pouch is dangling with weight in it and when you move and you stop your body that pouch keeps moving usually because it's got weight and it's just dangling it'll move for two or three seconds I did a video on that and I never aired it because of that that's unacceptable where I hunt three years I haven't seen a mature buck here I sure don't want to screw it up by having something wiggling when I do get that opportunity so once you get up I'm going to shorten this a little bit. Reach around. And again, I've shown this on videos. Girth hitch. Reach your hand through the loop. Run all your gear through there. Pull it up to where you want it. And I like to have mine at about eye level when I'm hunting. Which is right about there. Snug it up. <laughs> Hook the carabiner on your tree tether. Now I just happen to have this on a rope man right now. Uh, they actually come with Prusik knots. But pull that, put that on your tree tether. Pull it up until you can just barely feel it kind of snugging up a little bit and then what you want to do let out a little bit of this and either loosen bear with me <laughs> I am loosening my waist strap you want to loosen that waist belt a lot because what you're going to do is you're going to slide both of these panels still keeping them together you're going to slide them down under your butt okay once you get them under your butt then you can now you're still hooked to the tree tether here you can adjust the tree tether how you want it you just want to make sure it's somewhat supporting your weight which it is i can feel the tension on that so now i can disattach this i can disattach my lineman rope And throw that lineman rope in my pack. Okay, now I've slid both panels. Make sure the speaker's still working. Okay, I've slid both panels under my butt. So they're totally overlapped still. So now what you want to do, if you're okay with what you're wearing, as far as your hunting clothing... Then what you want to do is adjust the panels how you want them. That's what's so cool about a two panel. You can do it however you want. See right now they're overlapped so that's a six inch seat. I can make it a seven inch seat. I can make it an eight inch seat. I can make it a nine inch seat. I can have them just touching each other where it's about a 12 inch seat. I can pull this up into my back. I can make this any way I want at any moment in time in seconds. A little early a one or two to two seconds. Now, I personally, I like hunting with them slightly overlapped. So I like about a 10 inch, 9 to 10 inch seat. So, now what I would do is pull my bow up, hang it up here, take my quiver off, usually attach it up here to the tree on a strap or a screw in bow holder again, or I actually have a screw in quiver adapter that my quiver hooks right to. And, uh, and now, you know, you're, you're pretty much hunting if you're okay with the way you're you're dressed now I have on here on this particular tree I kind of did it both ways I've got three screw in Cranfords these are the deluxe steps these right here 
That's a deluxe single fold. Those are awesome to stand on for hunting. And then I also have a set of Cranford strap-ons for public, and that's these right here. And these also fold up. And they're made out of steel, so they're kind of heavy, and they are on a ratchet strap. But uh, that allows me to move around the tree. I never hunt like this. I never hunt using a ratchet strap with strap-ons as in conjunction with screw-ins. I'm just showing this as an example of using both methods. And anytime you want to move around the tree, you just let out a little bit of strap and you'd have your bow in your hand and you can move around the tree and shoot any direction you want. And you want to keep your steps relatively close together so you can easily move around the tree. And the purpose of having the backpack 120 degrees to your right is I can move, I can move 90 degrees to my right and that backpack is still off my shoulder. It's not in my face. If I move, if I put the pack 90 degrees to my right, kind of like I do 90 degrees to left, my left with my bow, when I spin around 90 degrees to my right, the backpack's gonna be right in my face. And it may affect, I may hit it when I draw my bow. So I put that 120 degrees around to the side, and that way, it's still really simple to get into. I can reach in it with no problem and grab stuff and it's it's out of the way whether I go around this way or around that way it's out of the way again 100 about 120 130 degrees now this is not this is an old old scent lock jacket um, and I use it for scouting some I got several old suits uh, that I used for hunting and I swapped them out I just use them for scouting now preseason speed tours and in-season scouting I don't use it during postseason because I don't need it so far in advance of any deer movements. So let's say I'm in a tree. This is what's cool about a two panel. Let's say I'm in a tree and I want to change my clothes. Lift my weight up, overlap these panels. Totally overlap the panels. Got this cord going up my back so. Now, I've been kind of fortunate because I've been in this industry for since 1975. I've been bow hunting since 64 or 65. Um, but I've been in the industry either as a, a buyer or a sales rep for a lot, a lot of years. And this here, top, is a, a dual fold top layer. I've got two of these top layers. I've got one bottom layer. And this is made out of silk. So when it's warm out, this is a really, really nice piece because it, it, uh, it doesn't make you overheat. You know, if you look at all the people in the Middle East, a lot of them wear, wear silk because it's so hot over there. Uh, I don't know of anybody that makes silk underwear anymore, but this is literally, it's paper thin. I love this thing. And it's really, really stood the test of time because i've had this since the 70s i've got two of them and they're both identical and i got one pair of bottoms so anyway if i were going to put on more garments i'm going to do one of two things if it's hot out i'm going to reach in my pack and i have right here i have a ziploc full of uh, body wipes you know basically they're pampers or huggies Nonsense hypoallergenic baby wipes. So I'll take these out and I'll take a few out and I'll wipe my face down if it's all sweaty. I may take off my top so I'm totally bare naked. I'm up on my upper body and wipe my body all down. And then I always carry extra plastic bags. So the used ones that I've used, I'll put them in a Ziploc and seal that shut so there's no odor. I'll flatten it out and seal it shut. But I always take baby wipes with me that are scent free and wipe down my hands before I put on my my other gloves, because I use a different pair of gloves when I'm physically hunting, uh, that are washed in scent-free detergent. Uh, actually, they're Manzella Rangers. Love them. So I'll use these a lot, especially early season like it is right now. It's like 70 degrees. And then if I want to add layers, like I said, I took off my jacket, hung it here on my top cam of my bow because my bow was hanging there. Rather than go through the process so I don't overheat, I'd basically just put this on over top of this. Guess I should have shown something before. You know, I can 
literally, I can unbuckle my pants because my saddle is so down, my saddle is so far down below my waist. I can unbuckle my pants, untuck my shirt, tuck every, you know, pull everything back around, tuck it back in when I put on my extra layers or take layers off. And then I just reattach my belt. This is the belt on my pants, by the way. The belt on my uh, saddle, ESS, stays loose all the time I'm hunting. I either disattach it totally or it's hanging totally loose. Oh, and I forgot these. I forget these all the time because I don't usually use these because <laughs> they don't really serve a lot of function. But these are leg straps. I should have put these on at the base of the tree. I forgot. And when you're hunting, these are totally loose. They dangle free. If you notice, I've got those, I've got these buckles all the way out to the end. So just put those in there and let those dangle loose. They're put on there for liability purposes in case you slid through the saddle, you'd catch on those leg straps. But let's be honest here. If you slid through the saddle, you're going to catch on your armpits on the saddle anyway. So you're not going to go more than that far, whether you're using these or whether you're you know just having the saddle stop your body so so then you put your I put my jacket back on this is a really simple process not an all-day sit I'll do this for I'll change my clothes four times during the day every single every single hunt I do on an all-day sit I change four times change once when I get in the tree I'll add my upper body layers on about 11 o'clock, if it's especially if it's a sunny day, it starts to get warmer. I start to overheat because I got layers on from when it was cold in the morning. I'll lower my saddle back down, take off layers, put them in my backpack, you know, pull my pull my saddle back up to where I want to hunt, you know, overlap the panel or widen the panels a little bit. And then uh, two, three, four o'clock starts getting cold again. Really simple. Overlap the panels. Again, my whole upper waist is wide open. Undo my jacket, put on my layers, tuck them in, put my jacket back on, and then if I've got a long exit route, which is most often the case, um, before I even get out of the tree, I don't want to overheat because I've got all my layers on now. I don't want to overheat with my exit and getting down the tree because that's, that's kind of stressful too and uh, makes you anxious. So what I'll do is before I get out of the tree and it's dark at this point in time, I will again, take off my jacket, take off my layers, put them in here and then just put my jacket on with my bottom layer. And typically I wear a pretty thin bottom layer. Obviously this one's silk, this is like paper. It's like nothing, um, but it's pretty rare. I wear anything over a 260 weight icebreaker merino wool. Um, I'll wear a 200, which is a little lighter and then I'll wear a 260. And uh, the reason that is, is I wear, last two years I've been wearing these heated vests with the battery packs and they are absolutely unbelievably awesome. Scentlock makes them, theirs is called the Reactor. And there's a company, I bought one online, it was, um, oh, starts with a W. Anyway, it was, uh, it wasn't very expensive and it has a little, has one carbon fiber in the back of the collar and it's just so awesome it keeps the back of my neck warm and it was kind of unique be walston walston w-a-l-s-t-o-n uh it has it has uh elements in the f panels in the front carbon panels in the front and carbon panels in the back plus that one in the back of the neck and it has separate on and off switches for front and back so if you just want to have the back ones on you can just touch the back panel and they're low medium high and the back panel runs the one in the collar, uh, and then the other button runs the one panels in the front. But those heated uh, vests are awesome when it gets cold. And I wear that right over my bottom layer. So I don't wear a really heavy base bottom layer because I want to be able to feel the heat from those element, from those carbon element packs. Because um, the, the heavier your base garment is when you're wearing a heated vest, the less you can feel the heat, obviously, because it's not as close to your body. So um, icebreaker, hands down. I'm a big merino wool guy. Um, I have some old Scentlock uh, 
lightweight base layers. Uh, I don't think they offer them now. I don't know if they will again next year or so. Um, but they are awesome because a lot of times when I'm walking in, if it's warm, I'll wear that as my only garment. You know, I've basically got a long sleeve, lightweight uh, base garment on, both top and bottom. I look like I'm a ballerina in camo. And, um, and they have the exact, they had, they used to have the exact same carbon that the exterior suits have now. So, you know, the, I think the base layers they're making now, I don't know if they've changed it, but they had stretch panels with no carbon in them, which I totally do not agree with. Anything you're wearing in sunlight should have carbon throughout the entire piece. Uh, but anyway, these old ones did, and I wear those a lot. But um, I also wear a lot of merino wool. When it starts to get cold, merino wool is my go-to base. Icebreaker makes hands down the best merino wool products in the world. Uh, First Light makes decent stuff. Uh, I think Smart Wool makes some too. But um, Icebreaker is definitely the best. And they make it in, a, I think, a 160, a 200 weight, 260 weight, and a 360 weight. And all I use is 200s for the most part, and then 260s once in a blue moon. But anyway, I hope this uh, kind of clarifies how easy it is to climb up a tree with a saddle on. You just have to make sure that when you put the saddle on and you pull those two panels up, you don't put them over any part of your butt cheeks. Because as soon as you walk or climb, your butt's moving all the time, and that those are going to separate. And you don't use pouches. That's what backpacks are for. There's no reason to have extra junk on your saddle while you're hunting. It's ridiculous. But anyway, um, make sure when you put the two panels up on anybody's two-panel saddle, I don't care whose it is, pull it up into your back like a, like a weightlifting belt would be so that they stay overlapped and they stay tight because when you tighten it in the front, it's going to hold them in place because your back does move. Anything below your waist, there's movement. So uh, keep that in mind. Now for getting out of the tree, it's kind of the reverse process. Take your lineman rope, hook it to your lineman loop, go around the tree, hook it to your other lineman loop, pull it a little bit snug, and then take both of these panels while they're overlapped and pull them up into your back again. Don't leave them under your butt. Pull them up into your back. Then once they're up into your back, you want to take your waist belt, tighten it back up again like you had it originally. Now you're totally supported. I'm so used to a rope, man. <laughs> Now you're totally supported by your lineman rope, then you can disattach Sometimes these girth hitch knots are kind of hard to slide apart, but we're getting in. Open up that girth hitch knot, pull your stuff back through. Take your tree tether, put it in your pack. Zip your pack shut. Obviously you'd lifted your bow up probably before you put your lineman rope on, lowered it to the ground with your bow rope. And then typically when I'm going down the tree, Rather than have the pack just on one shoulder, because I like it on one shoulder going up, that way it's really easy to take off. When I'm going down, I usually will put it over both shoulders. And then I go down the tree.
And once on the ground, do the exact same thing we did before. Slide your carabiner on your lineman rope out. You already have it hooked to your carabiner over to your lineman loop over here. Wrap it around your body. Hook the carabiner to your bridge. Again, to your bridge strap. And then slide. Reach around. And slide that around. And you can just take your rope, wherever it is, stick it in here, and now you're walking. That will not move. I 100% promise you, this will not move when you're walking and climbing if you put it on this way. Super easy. And try it. It's, it's, <laughs> I can't believe I have people call me on it, to be honest with you. Because it only, I mean, as soon as you're walking, if you had it on over your butt, it would, should be very obvious that your butt moving is what's making those panels separate. So obviously it needs to go up over your waist. You're just walking anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I, uh, I hope you could take away from this a little bit something. And uh, I'm telling you what, you guys that are afraid of two-panel saddles, you shouldn't be. I've been doing this more than anybody I know, anybody in the saddle industry. I've taken 44 book bucks out of a saddle on pressured properties, public lands, and knock on doors for free permission only over the last years. And uh, I've designed several single panel saddles for prominent companies and I still don't use them because a two panel is that much of an advantage. It just takes an extra 10 or 15 minutes or half an hour to learn how to use it. I mean, if you're hunting all year for the rest of your life, what's 10 minutes or 20 minutes to actually go out in the tree and, and learn how to pull the panels up and and put them up above your waist so you can walk in and go up and putting your ropes and stuff in your backpack as opposed to having pouches um learn how to use a two panel you you won't be sorry <laughs> uh, you will definitely like it i guarantee it'll be more comfortable than anything you're running out of now